the country is doing pretty well. Did that answer your question at all? Yeah, I and I think you're going to still see it heating up. Uh, the banks, you have more banks coming into the market. Um, nobody here from Pittsburgh, PNC, right? PNC has made a huge present in this market. Unbelievable. Phenomenal. Uh, and you're going to see more, probably. So what's that average uh, uh, age of the car on the road? What, what historically has that been? It's coming down from... You know, I, I don't know that. Okay. Uh, I really don't. Yeah. Plus, we're getting back into the leasing business. <clears throat> you know, at one time, uh, we probably did 30% leasing, and then the market was flooded with leasing, and the bank said, no more. I've taken a beating. beating. Well, now... Please give me more. The residuals of the cars are getting stronger because the used car market is getting better. Um, there's, there's fewer cars going to fleet service, rental cars. Um, and that protects the value of the vehicle down the road. Uh, so as residuals come up, you still have low interest rates. The lease payment for somebody who drives less than 18,000 miles a year is a pretty good deal. And that's a two, three, four year lease. Not to my knowledge, but that doesn't mean they, they don't. They may have. Steve, what's the future of the bigger vehicles from the pressure on gas mileage? Um, okay. Uh, there's, st <clears throat> there's still a pretty big commercial market for three-quarter ton and one-ton trucks. Um, this sort of goes back to with propulsion. We have, we have a new Generation 5 series coming out next summer, which should impure, with it's all variable, variable valve timing, um, direct injection, which controls the amount of fuel that goes into the, the car, the truck. Um, and there's some, oh yeah, and, and of course the ability to run on less than eight cylinders. Um, that improves fuel economy to a certain degree, but you're talking about a 6,000 pound vehicle and you've got to get it going. So GM has uh, sort of a bevy of alternatives with fuel for heavy duty trucks. They have compressed natural gas, which is functional and works very well. They have compressed liquid gas, which I'm not too familiar with yet, and then they have bi-fuel vehicles around both gasoline and CNG. So the ability to buy a three-quarter ton truck that's able to pull uh, 15,000 pounds uh, can run on both CNG and fuel, and regular gasoline. Uh, then, of course, you have the flex fuel, which runs on 15% uh, ethanol. They call it E85. Um, and then you have... Excuse me, I said that backwards. You have the ability, E85 is running on 85% ethanol, 15% gasoline, and then just then you have just the reverse. You have 10% uh, ethanol and 90% gasoline. So those options are out there. And then we still have somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 hydrogen vehicles on the road that, were being, that are being tested, that are run on pure hydrogen, and obviously the only byproduct of hydrogen is water. Um, we have our dual mode hybrids, which take that 6,000 pound utility vehicle and move it from, how many miles to a gallon do you get? 17, 16? And move it from 16 or 17 miles to a gallon to 19 or 20, where it runs just on electricity in the city when you're doing less than 30 miles an hour. And then of course we have our plug-in vehicles that uh, Depending on how far you drive, you don't you do not burn fuel. Uh, my neighbor has a Volt. He bought it September a year ago, and he's put nine gallons of gas in it in a little over 12 months. And he likes it. He's looking for the next generation. He wants to move up from a Chevy Volt to a Cadillac ELR. And we probably probably sell about. Um, 
6,000, 8,000, not we, General Motors, six to 8,000 volts uh, a year. Not a lot, but heading in the right direction. And, and the car will plug in overnight in your garage and, and completely charge in about nine hours, or you can go to 220 in four and a half hours. And they have solar canopies that, that, that'll charge the car for you also. I read an article the other day about a, uh, how quick the customers one, one second. Okay. Hold the thought. To finish answering that question, <clears throat> yes, they still have heavy-duty trucks, 1500s on the road. Uh, are they cutting out some of them? Yes. They stopped building the 4500, the 5500, and the 6500 series. <clears throat> yes. And they're doing away with things like the Avalanche. Um, and the uh, EXT, Escalade EXT, uh, getting ready for corporate average fuel economy going up every year. I'll still be able to get my Yukon. You'll still be able to get your Yukon and probably better gas mileage. And, and they're coming out with smaller cars to offset that with the Chevy, um, Spark, Sonic, and all those smaller cars are getting better fuel economy. The, we have ES, I forgot that we have the E-Assist technology uh, which the Malibu, Regal, and La Crosse carry, which works, which um, has electrical motors in it that help drive the car. It uses less gas going uphill. You have electrical and motors pulling. Um, it shuts off at red lights, blah, blah, you know, all these little different things to get that fuel economy up into the high 30s, 36, 37 miles per gallon in a full-size car. So, that's all working on a corporate average fuel economy, so you can build the trucks. Sorry, Joel. Okay. Um, I, I think a lot of things are going to happen in the next you know, 10, 20 years, obviously, in the automobile, just like when computers started coming out, they started getting better and better. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of new technologies coming out in the car industry. But I read an article the other day on the, some electric cars, and they're starting to, um, when I understand the article, they're leasing the battery. Buy the car for a lower price, and then every month you make a payment on the battery. And some of them ran for fifty-nine to eighty-nine a month. Uh, how do you, in the car industry, how do you? I mean, me personally, I would hate to go out and spend twenty thousand, and then every month have to spend eighty-five more dollars just to keep, you know, to keep the battery to make it run. And well, I just wanted your opinion on that. Well, I'm not familiar with that yet. Um, I believe our battery packs we guarantee for 150,000 miles, um, which should get you through most frugal people. There's probably a frugal group out there that'll go past that. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I don't know if that's a viable. <clears throat> sounds like a New York City deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: I'm not the fair. I saw one with Spark. I was amazed at how economically priced. Yeah, it's, it's an inexpensive car with a lot of technology inside. Right. It comes with its own iPad right in the dash. It's not quite an iPad, but equivalent. Yes, Joe. You talk about uh, the technologies changing in the cars themselves. Maybe you don't know, maybe you do know. What about the technology and the support system like the roads, all the stop signs? If I'm not mistaken, I think most of the fuel is burned accelerating from probably to go any thoughts on anybody doing something or looking into that avenue to try and increase gas mileage yeah uh, that goes back to some of that electric driven the dual mode hybrids mm -hmm. that we they sell in the big trucks and the utility vehicles uh, they're battery driven initially mm -hmm. and when you're at that red light the engine's off the e, the e assist that I spoke about in the Malibu Regal, same thing. Uh, when you start out, it starts out with electric motors and gasoline. Uh, the whole idea is to, to burn less gas to get you going. And then, of course, they have six speed. We have six speed transmissions, but the competition has eight. Uh, so it gets you through the gears quicker. It, it, it affects your uh, performance as far as how fast you can get it going, uh, but it, it's more economical to get you.